From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I'm Jonathan Ambarian at the State Capitol, where lawmakers passed a number of bills this year aimed at encouraging housing development across Montana. But how quickly will we see the impacts of those laws? I took a look at some of the early indications. And she's a business owner, a former city commissioner, and a Bozeman legend. Our Chad Lehman sits down with Eho Pomeroy and talks about moving to Bozeman and her battle with cancer and how she has remained positive. Good Friday morning, 629 on this brisk, very brisk yeah. Black Friday. I can't wait to see the Eho Pomeroy yeah, interview. Yeah, it's a super uh, exciting yeah, one. Chad's good. been talking about it and raving about her person. So. Yeah. Uh, looking at conditions this morning, very cold, extra layers this morning. If you're, if you've got some work outside, just <laughs> plan on coats and uh, breaks in the car for a few minutes because it is going to be very cold over the course of the next couple of days. Uh, temperatures trying to warm up as you go into the afternoon, but not doing a great job, mainly because of the wind. We do have a little light snow that makes it a little bit more uncomfortable as we're starting the morning. Daytime high staying into the mid 20s today. It is going to be a cold one today, but we have a little bit of a warm up heading our direction. I'll talk more about the timing in just a few minutes. Alrighty, thank you, Matt. Well, as we reported to you yesterday about a pedestrian that was killed in a hit and run just north of Three Forks, MHP is now asking for your help. Troopers say that the person of interest is driving a 2011 to 2016 Ford F Y, or excuse me, Ford Super Duty Crew Cab with a long box box pickup, and was also towing a single axle box type utility trailer. They're asking to look at these photos, and they're pretty similar to the one that was involved in the crash. Uh, they also s released surveillance video of, or excuse me, surveillance photos of the truck that was traveling through North Townsend just around 510 yesterday morning. MHP says that the trailer is likely missing a driver's side fender and possibly has a spare tire on it. They're asking if you have any information to call MHP's communication center at 406-841-7022. Well, Eho Pomeroy has spent decades working for the Bozeman City community and through, with her restaurant and through her time at the Bozeman City Commission. And when she was diagnosed with cancer this spring, the community answered back with generous donations to her GoFundMe page. Our Chet Lehman sat down with Eho to talk about coming to Bozeman, her time here, and her relaxing approach as she fights cancer. Just down that sidewalk is the current home to Eho's Korean Grill, but her story doesn't start here. It actually starts in college. Eho was a student at the University of Montana in Missoula and at Eastern Montana College, now MSU Billings. Eho's husband was from Billings, but he didn't want to live in Missoula. That means destination Bozeman. So he said, no, we are not going to go stay here in Missoula, so we are going to go Bozeman. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about Bozeman. So we came here for me, so I can get, go back to school. But instead of going back to school, I got a first job was a Great China War, Chinese restaurant. Mm -hmm. I did very well one year. Mm -hmm. And then I asked my husband, I want to do something else. Mm -hmm. So, and then he made my food cart. Mm -hmm. That time it was only two food cart, mm -hmm. hot dogs and me. Now when Eho said it was a food cart, she wasn't kidding. It wasn't a food truck. It was a cart she pulled up and down the streets of Bozeman every day. That's how she started her business. Fast forward a few years and that cart turns into a brick and mortar restaurant. Eho would eventually run for and win a seat on the Bozeman City Commission and all was well. That is until last spring when her husband returned from his college class reunion back on the East Coast. He realized something wasn't right. When he came home, he find out and he realized I am totally different. Mm -hmm. I lay down, I sleeping all the time. And then he find out I couldn't walk very well. I could not talk. Mm -hmm. So he said, yo, this is not, 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 not you. you, you it's, it's something is not right. So he took me to the emergency room. And uh, emergency young doctor almost cried. He did a CT mm -hmm. test, find out I have a glioblastoma. Glioblastoma is an aggressive form of brain cancer, and treatment includes surgery, radiation, and chemo. Lots of chemo. Eho has done it all, and she's approached it all just like she did her business, whether it was pulling that cart up and down the streets of Bozeman 
or running this building behind me. Every three months, MRI. Wow. I know. So how is the cancer doing or not? Mm -hmm. So I cannot control, but I do my best. Right. How about that? And you walk? You do your I yoga walk. You're doing, I yoga. You're doing, trying to keep your life as normal as you can. Yes. In, instead of the, uh, the, uh, during the chemo, I decided not to go to hot yoga because it's a little bit too much. When I do chemo, you know, chemo is killing everything, right? Mm -hmm. So relax a little bit. For Iho, relaxing includes walking around town, her town, visit to the hot springs, and after chemo, an eventual return to hot yoga. I guess relaxing is different for everyone. Yeah. Good idea. Yes. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. Yes, thank you, thank you. It's, it's hard for me to picture you relaxing a little bit. That's, <laughs> that's not your style. That's not what I know about you. Relaxing uh, is not your strong suit. Working hard is your strong suit. Working hard. I have worked hard. Mm -hmm. Now I'm relaxing. How about that? How about that, indeed? Oh, thank you. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Michelle Lehman, MTN News. It's been pretty sweet to see her smile as she walks throughout downtown, so we wish her well. All right, well, during the Montana 2023 legislative session, lawmakers proposed a series of bills that were intended to make a dent in the state's housing shortage by encouraging more housing development. But one open question has quickly remained is how quickly those changes would move into effect. Our M10 senior political reporter Jonathan Amberian looks at some of those first indications of how the bills are affecting the state's environment for housing. It's been about six months since the end of the 2023 legislative session when Montana lawmakers approved a number of changes to the state's zoning and land use laws with the aim of increasing Montana's housing supply. I reached out to find out whether we've seen any signs yet of the impacts those laws could have. Alberto Valner is developing the Alpine 9340 project, a mixed-use development on the south end of Whitefish that will combine retail space with more than 200 new apartments. These are not Airbnb, these are not luxury apartments. These are, you know, what we call truly workforce housing units. It's the type of project that will be encouraged through Senate Bill 245, which requires larger cities to allow mixed use and multiple unit developments in areas zoned for commercial use. Valner says Alpine 9340 was already in the works, and he actually didn't know about the bill until after it had passed. He says they've been working cooperatively with Whitefish, including on a development agreement, but he believes 245 has helped the project make its way through the approval process. Again, I want to reiterate, you know, we did not use it as a tool to, you know, to, to go against the city in our case, but I do admit it definitely facilitated the process. For the Montana Association of Realtors, one of the bills they pushed for this year is Senate Bill 382, a major overhaul of local land use planning. MAR President DJ Smith says they want to see communities have discussions about where they want to see growth first, so there's more predictability as projects move forward. And so when an investor has an opportunity to bring a product to line, they're not getting last minute conditions of subdivision approval that just that condition can make or break a project. They should know that before they put the investment. Supporters of SB 382 pointed us to some real estate listings already citing the act as a reason some parcels may be more attractive for development. But Smith said in general, the impact's likely to be in the longer term. I don't think, you know, immediately you saw property values increase or decrease because of that. There are significant requirements on local governments to actually implement the benefits of, of this. The Governor's Housing Task Force is moving into the next phase of its work going into next year, and their focus is going to be on looking at specific development proposals around the state to try to get a better understanding of what makes some projects a success and why others face obstacles. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. The governor's mansion in Helena has been sitting empty since 2021 as it's going, undergoing some renovations. And our Marion Davidson checks in to see how those renovations are going. I'm answering a question about the governor's mansion. Sally Spear wanted to know what's going on with it, and I think the best way to answer that is to take you inside. A little background, this 12,000 square foot house was built in 1959 and governors and their families lived here up until September 2021 when a major renovation project was put out to bid. Electrical needs to be completely redone, plumbing systems, sewer systems, um, ADA compliance is very important because it is a public residence. 
there are some issues uh, even with insulation in the attic. Uh, the roof needs to be replaced, rain gutter soffits. Aside from paint colors, an updated bathroom or two, a wood floor, and boilers installed in the early 2000s, not much has changed in this house since it was built. Like this is original plumbing. And these outlets, they're, well, outdated. And when it comes to air conditioning the house, you can choose the bedrooms or the stateroom, but not both effectively. Also, there's asbestos abatement that needs to be done, like under this floor, which I was told was secured with asbestos glue. So with all of that in mind, renovating is a big project. It's almost a matter of when, it, where do you stop? Because there are so many issues that need to be addressed. The legislature appropriated $1.9 million for renovations in 2019 and another $440,500 in the 2021 session. But when the project was put out to bid, that more than $2.3 million does not cover the cost. We are we probably roughly probably just shy of double where we expected it to be as costs went up for steel over 100 percent lumber went up all, almost 90 percent in that time frame so for now this house is sitting empty with renovations on hold until costs come down but that does not mean it has been forgotten even though it's empty we still have to make sure that we take care of it because we, we need to be good neighbors and we need to protect the state's assets so we are still in here every single day all that to say, the short answer to Sally's question, the governor's mansion is being maintained until renovations are possible. And viewers, if you have questions, you can send them my way. You can find me on Facebook, on Instagram, or send me an email, and I'll do my best to get you an answer. In Helena, Marion Davidson, MTN News. Jefferson High School's drama class is premiering a play that was written by their drama teacher at the Mother Lode Theater in Butte for a one-night performance only on November 25th. Our John Amy dropped into one of the rehearsals ahead of the big night. Jefferson High School may have a small drama department, but they have big ambitions and they're going to perform a play that their drama teacher wrote right here on the big stage of the Mother Lode Theater in Butte. It is a tragedy, musical, comedy, fantasy, um, all in one. And uh, my, uh, my goal was to, you know, tell a hero's journey from a different perspective. Hesford's play, Abundance, is about a blind girl overcoming adversity in a small mining town in 1890s Montana. The cast of students from the Boulder High School are dedicated to the project. So it's all just about bringing to life what he's written and obviously just follow his direction because he's the best director in the state and couldn't, do, couldn't be half the character or half the actor I am without him. The students have been working on this show for much of the past year. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. It's been hard at times, but we've pushed through and I think we're ready. All the hard work has brought this already tight-knit crew even closer. And I love acting with this crew because they're like my family and I spend a lot of time with them. So we get to know each other and we work together through things. The one night only show is November 25th at 6 o'clock and Hesford is confident the audience will love it. My uh, uh, students have really delivered um, uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it on, on this stage, the Mother Lode, which is an incredible theater. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Matt has your forecast, and we'll have a story about how you don't have to swing any punches on this Black Friday, so that way you can save money when you're spending. I'm John Matteries. On the eve of Black Friday, we've got some of the best deals that you're going to find at Story coming up.